so I will then give a talk on, on what is called EIT raw materials, which is a kick here. How many of you have actually any pre-hand knowledge of kicks and, and EIT? Okay, not so many, so I'm not preaching for the church choir. So I, I hope I can give you some, some more information what this is really about. Uh, so what is an EIT kick? Uh, the kick in, in the fantastic world of EU acronyms stands for, for knowledge and innovation communities. Uh, it's a thematic innovation community, as you can see here on the slide. So bringing uh, people from industry, from research institutes and academics together on a common topic, which in this case then are raw materials in, in the very broad sense. Uh, so it's really about uh, boosting uh, compet European competitiveness, uh, uh, building uh, new entrepreneurs in the sector, uh, changing the way we are educating our young uh, talents in, in, in the universities and bringing new ideas to the market. That, that's the baseline of, of a kick. So we really want to work in what we call the knowledge triangle with higher education, business and, and research and technology providers and, and bringing it, this into some kind of, of, of context of entrepreneurship in, in Europe. So what do we do uh, in, in uh, the European Institute of Innovation and Technology? So, as I said, we want to, to change the students into entrepreneurs more. We have traditionally in Europe, I think, been, been educating students to go into the big industry, not so much to, to, to start their own companies, to be their own entrepreneurs and so forth. So that's an important change that we want to establish in Europe. We will also try to take ideas from, from uh, talented people in universities, research institutes and, and, and uh, industry to the market. That's, that's a big aim of a kick. We will also try to open up the, the, the infrastructure that is available in Europe to provide possibilities for these new entrepreneurs in the big partnerships that we are building in, in, in a kick. So, the EIT community, I, I'm here pr to particularly talk about the, the raw materials kick, but there are also other kicks, as you can see on this slide. Uh, it all started four or five years ago with three different uh, kicks, one on climate, one on energy, uh, and one on uh, ICT. So then two years ago, there were two new kicks added to this community, one on raw materials and one on health. So you can see when you look at this slide, when the European Union decides to, to, to establish a kick, it's all about the big grand challenges related to the European competitiveness on, on a global market. And there are also, as you can see, more kicks coming on stream this year and in 2018. So that's the EIT community in short. Uh, so what do we want to do? I kind of already talked about this, radical innovation, new education approaches, guided entrepreneurship. So uh, we will be a breeding ground for the European sector, for talents, education, venture capital, ideas, startups, products and services. So it's, it's a rather high ambition, this kick has. Uh, and I didn't mention this, but uh, the EIT will put money European funding into this kick for seven plus seven years. So it's, it's something that will actually be quite prominent on the European stage for seven plus seven years, which is an extremely long term for any type of, of, of uh, innovation uh, project, you could say. Uh, it's also, I think it's worth to show this slide. It, it's, I, I, was already from the start part of, of this community that responded to the call when we knew that there will be a, a call for, for a new EIT on raw materials. So actually, we, we, it was decided in, on the 9th of December 2014, but partners in Europe came together already, I think, three years before that date to build a good proposal. So. In the end of the day, I think we were 150, 120 partners in Europe that teamed up 
to write a proposal that was 30 pages or so. So the amount of work that, were put, that was put into that very proposal, I think, is just fantastic. And I, I promised everyone that I one day should calculate the cost per letter in that application, and that will be very high. Probably the cost of that application was around 100 million Swedish kronor. So you get an idea about the immense work behind that. And one of, of the writers of that application is actually here today, Lawrence. And so if it weren't for Lawrence, I wouldn't be standing here today to talk about the EIT raw materials. So thanks for that, uh, Lawrence. And I hope there is a payback time for you as well now. Uh, and then, as I said, it was granted in, two, in end of 2014, and then it will run now for seven plus seven years. Uh, uh, it's a partnership, it's a pan-European partnership. There are six so-called co-location centers, which is the, the, the kind of gravity centers for the kick. And as you can see, there is one of those uh, co-location centers up here in Luleå. And I believe, I might be wrong, but I believe that's the first co-location center that is established outside any of the major cities in Europe. So, so I think it's a big achievement that we finally got one co-location up here in Luleå. But then you can see they are distributed around Europe. So from Rome in south to Luleå in north. Uh, so uh, in all 22 European countries are involved in various ways in, in the kick. And as I said, around 150 partners. Are actually, it's, it's a few more now than 115. So this is the partnership. And as you can see on this slide, it's a nice mix of research institutes, universities, and industry. And all have gone together to create what I mentioned before, related to raw materials in various ways along the value chain. So I hope some of you recognize some of the partners on this slide. So, so for instance, here from Sweden, it's RISE. It's, it's Luleå University, De Boliden, Sandvik, Atlas Copco, KTH, uh, and so forth. Uh, we decided quite early in the application phase to work in the kick on six predefined themes, which you have here on, on, on the slide. Uh, and what, if you look at these themes, it's, it's also, you could say in a way, fairly traditional. It's the value chain of raw materials from exploration, mining, processing, metallurgy, but it's also recycling, it's substitution, and it goes all the way to design of products. So when we talk about the EIT raw materials kick, this is the context. So it goes all the way from exploration to, you could say, the finished products. Uh, what do we actually do in the kick? It's good to get together and, and talk, but we also, of course, want to do something. So the activities are defined in the kick on four different, uh, you could say, headings, which is matchmaking, networking, validation, acceleration, business creation and support, and learning and education. So behind those headings, there is a number of different activities that partners in the kick can go together to do. Uh, and those activities that we, we, we propose in the kick, they are called CAVAS, Kick Added Value Activities, another fantastic acronym. And they are complemented by things that the partners are already doing in their research, in their daily life, which is related to raw materials, and that is called KCAs, so Kick Complementary Activities. Uh, and it takes some time to really dig into this to understand the relationship between these this different uh, type of, of funding uh, possibilities. But that's, that's the sh short story. So actually what, what, what uh, uh, EIT then is doing, they are providing, uh, you could say, 25% of the total uh, budget for any activity they want to do. Some of the activities, the kick will fund 100%, others only 20%. But the total sum, adds up to 25% of what actually the kick is doing is, is funded by, by EIT. So here you have the different activities, uh, altogether 14. Uh, you can see under those headings matchmaking, networking, there are different uh, promotional activities towards getting uh, networks, people together to talk uh, ideas and, and, and innovation. 
The big money comes in validation and acceleration because you can see here is what we call upscaling, which is more related to piloting, demonstrating. Uh, so I guess that's probably about 50-60% of the total budget in, in, in the kick. And also we want to build networks and infrastructure. As I said, we want to pool uh, uh, infrastructure together and, and offer that to, to, to our partners. Of course, also coming from a university, we do a lot on the learning and outreach side. So new PhD programs, new master's programs, uh, lifelong learning, uh, wider society learning, and pull that together. And as I said, with an entrepreneurial uh, view in, in what we are doing. And finally, then the business creation and support. We of course want to boost new uh, small SMEs and put things to market and, and, and commercialize great ideas that stem from the kick. Uh, so, uh, it all, I guess, started when, when the European Union saw this slide. And we realized that uh, Europe is the most import-dependent uh, part of the world in terms of raw materials. So something has to be done. So, so I guess that was... Uh, the reason why they, they defined raw materials as a grand challenge for, for Europe. So for many commodities we are 100% import dependent. For other you can see some of the main commodities. There is still a very high import demand in, into Europe. And especially if you, if you look at what is called critical uh, raw materials. Many of those that sit in new green technologies, we have 100% import dependence. And I guess the most well-known is, is the rare earth uh, oxides, rare earth elements. Uh, so we also have some, something that we call uh, lighthouse themes. So you can go together on, on a common theme to, for instance, look at the high-tech mine of the future. What does it take in terms of innovation and entrepreneurship and different new ideas? to actually put that high-tech mine into production, say, in, in 10, 15 years. So that's kind of defining a, 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 a lighthouse framework, you could say. And here are just some ideas on potential and, and what the kick can offer as solution to those, uh, those uh, challenges. Another thing could be new solutions for mobility. How, how, how is the car manufacturing industry looking into the future? What type of materials are they using? Uh, Jöran, you mentioned that, uh, what did you call it? The, the new smart cars that are, are driving themselves. And, 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 but all that takes, of course, also materials and new design of, of, of different solutions. And, and this is one uh, possibility then that, that way we think that the EIT raw materials can contribute. Uh, so the mission for EIT raw materials to boost competitiveness, growth, attractiveness to European raw materials sector via radical innovation entrepreneurship. That's our mission. Uh, and of course, the grand uh, challenge is there is security of, of supply. Uh, that's why I asked you, Jöran, about uh, the security of supply. I think personally that's going to be a big issue in the future. Uh, Designing solutions for, for next generation technologies or, or, or products. And also the circular economy and closing the material loops. Uh, I think we can jump this. So, of course, the kicks are all about knowing that Europe, we are quite good at, at uh, uh, producing new ideas, new concepts. Uh, we have fantastic scientists, uh, we have good industry, uh, but uh, we have a big problem to take those ideas to the market. And that's where Europe is, is lagging behind uh, other parts like, for instance, the US. So you have all heard about this bridging the valley of death, and I guess our, our key operational area would be in the center here in the Valley of Death. So looking at exploitation of, of, of uh, ideas and, and results and, and commercialize those ideas and, and also bring some added value to the kick as such in the end. 
So leverage kick funding. Uh, here are some examples of, of where kick funding can go to and how it leverage different issues in order to, to get the ideas to the market and commercialize ideas and, and, uh, and uh, have the kick perhaps also live after those 14 years of, of funding from EIT. Either as its own entity or in a different shape after the four, 14 years. So what type of money are we talking about? It's up here on the slide. So the EIT in Budapest will provide this partnership with 400 million euros over this uh, time period. In order to get these 400 million euros to the partnership, we would need to bring in, as you see here, 1.3 billion euros from the partners and also additional 300 million euros as uh, co-funding fr from partnerships. So this in total then, uh, means around 2 billion euros will be invested in different activities over the next 14 years on raw materials. And I think it, it without comparison, I think this is the biggest uh, program ever made anywhere uh, related to innovation and, uh, and research on raw materials, and hopefully it will, it will also mean a, a big impact on, on the European business in raw materials. These are our KPIs until 2022. So I'm not sure what you think about this, if this is a high ambition or if it's a modest ambition, but 10,000 new jobs created due to activities in the kick. I think it's, uh, it's going to be a challenge. 8,000 new uh, and for entrepreneurship-minded people, so new students with a new mindset. Actually put 50 new SMEs to the market, uh, and so forth. And 800 million euros invested in new pilot and dem demo infrastructure. I think that's it's quite interesting to see if we can achieve this. So uh, with that, I thank you very much, and I'm sorry that Ernst couldn't be here. Uh, I hope you got some ideas of what the kick is, is about, and, uh, and uh, I'm happy to, to answer any questions at this stage. Thank you very much for, for listening. Thank you, Per. Uh, and now we have some time for questions, and Daniel is running. Yeah. Good morning, and very yes. exciting talk. I am TK Rai from Tata Steel India. Uh, my, maybe I'll seek some clarification from you. If you talk about raw materials, the geographies and locations are very difficult. Most of the time it is a very difficult terrain. So how to address the young professionals to go there and work? I am talking about basically getting the talent and retaining the talent in those geographies what you are talking about this raw material security and talking about development of raw materials. Yeah, so what you, uh, the question is really about what will we do in, in, in uh, learning and education, I guess, and, and get uh, people interested in taking the classes and courses and programs to go into the raw material sector? Do I uh, understand? That is, that is one, that is the human development part. Yeah. I'm talking about keeping those professionals in those terrains, okay, where it's really the life is difficult, it's not full of roses, okay? So that could be one challenge. I'm not sure whether it has been addressed or you're going to take it up. It's I'm not sure about that uh, geographies also. It's, it's, of course, first of all, I, I guess that I said that the kick is a European thing, and that's right, it is a European thing, but what I didn't mention is also that we, of course, would like to, to, to kind of lie globally with, with other uh, partners, uh, programs, schemes uh, around the world, which have the same ambition and goals as, as the kick. Uh, I think one challenge we have, and, and you saw I, I mentioned why the society learning and lifelong learning as two uh, key activities that we would like to do. So we have a lot of, of different ideas related to that issue. How, how, how do we educate the society? How do we get the image of the raw materials industry in, in a kind of a better shape here in Europe? Because there is an issue with the image of, of uh, if you take mining industry in Europe, for instance, there are a large part of Europe where there is excellent potential for mining, 
but they don't have the social license to operate because there is an image issue. So, so we, we work quite broadly with these issues, uh, uh, but in the end of the day, I think it's, it's educating the young people to have the right mindset when they go out, whether they end up in, in politics or in industry or wherever, they need to come out and have the right uh, approach and the right understanding of the raw material sector. So in the long run, I think that's the key thing, really. Thank you. Thank you. And I think that we have time for one more question. Seiji Nomura from Nippon Steel and Sumitomital Corporation Japan. Uh, I understand this EIT program contains all raw materials and from the viewpoint of iron and steel making, uh, how much does coal and iron ore account for your program? For example, your target is to create 10,000 new jobs and uh, how, much, uh, how many people will be uh, uh, in that 10,000 new jobs in from the viewpoint of coal and iron ore? So, so what, what, first of all, then, we, we, we target all different type of raw materials, but only non-energy materials. So, so coal, for instance, is not one of those materials. But for sure, iron and steel is, is very important. Uh, and where those 10,000 new jobs will be in the end of the day, I, I can't really say. It's up to the partners what type of projects and activities they are proposing and what gets accepted by, by, the, by the kick. But I know that there are quite a few partners that are, are uh, involved and interested in developing the, 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 the steel and iron, iron ore sector as well. So, so, but in the end of the day, we will see wh where they end up. <laughs> Hopefully, we will have 10,000 new jobs. Okay, we will see. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, and we also have a small gift for Per, of course. Thank you.